Hello my YouTube friends. I have a lot of people tell me their OBS recordings look bad when they use it to record their videos. Well, that shouldn't be the case, so if that's the case for you, you're doing something wrong. But seriously, there are a few reasons this could be happening, and one of those things could be your equipment. So let's go through the OBS recording process and get your recordings looking awesome. Let's get to it! My goal on this channel is to help people become better live streamers and maybe entertain a little bit in the process. So please take a second and leave me a comment down below to let me know how I'm doing. And while you're there, leave a thumbs up. This goes a long way towards helping YouTube to push this video to a wider audience. And if you're not subscribed, please do. This helps me to continue to make content that helps you. And it's totally free, so thanks. The first thing we need to do is look at our recording bit rate. It's not the same as the bit rate you stream at. So the first First thing we're going to do is click on settings. We're going to go into our output and we're going to select recording. Now here you want to browse to the location where you're going to save your files. And once you find that, we're going to go down and we're going to select our recording format. Now I like to use MP4. You can see down here we're going to have a little bit of a warning on this because if OBS was to crash during recording MP4, the file becomes unusable. There are other types of recording vessels that you can use in here that you can preserve that just in case if you crash OBS a lot, well, you probably probably have deeper problems with your machine. But if you don't, MP4 is just fine and it's the easiest one to put into, you know, any sort of editing software that you're going to use. But the next thing we want to be interested in here is our encoder. Let's drop this down. Now I have an Nvidia card, which means I have an NVIC encoder on my machine. But if you do not have an Nvidia card, you may just have X264. I also purchased the Apple ProRes for my machine, so I can encode from OBS into Apple ProRes if I like. I just use the NVIC encoder because I know it's maximized for that. I know it's optimized for that. It is the best encoder to use. Now, if you don't have an NVIC encoder, X264 is fine, but just be aware that that uses a heck of a lot of processing power on your computer. And so if you're running into issues with your processing, that might be why. So if I just leave it on NVIC, you can see down here, my bit rate is set at 60,000 and I use a a rate control of CBR, which is a constant bit rate. And this gives me high quality at 1920 by 1080, which is what I record at through OBS. Now you can see that this is different than live streaming because when you live stream, you do that probably at 1920 by 1080 at 6,000 kilobits per second, or maybe 5,000 kilobits per second. But when you are recording, you're going to want to go ahead and add a zero to that. So we're going to record at 60,000 kilobits bits per second. My preset is quality. I can also record at max quality, although I don't notice much of a visual difference. Keep in mind that the higher you go here, the more it will tax your computer. The profile set doesn't really make any difference that I can tell. And then look ahead and psycho visual tuning are only things that you are going to use for recording if you have a lot of motion on your screen, like a video game or something like that. Otherwise, that's going to stay the same. If we are going to record using X264. I also use CBR, which is a constant bit rate, and I go ahead and I bump this up to the same 60,000 kilobits per second for 1920 by 1080. I can use a custom buffer size, I choose not to, and then we just get down here to our CPU usage. So if I drop my CPU usage down, the higher you select here, the easier it is for your computer to process when you're doing doing X264. It also means you're getting less quality. So the lower you can go on this scale, say medium, that is going to be a much higher quality visual production, but it's also going to tax your computer. And this is where you're going to have to do some testing. You're going to have to hit that start record button and see what the video looks like. And I'm going to show you in a little while how you can actually troubleshoot this so that you can know exactly what is causing your problems or whether 
whether you're even having any issues at all. Now I don't use X264 because my machine has an Nvidia card which is maximized for being able to record this way. So you're going to have to test this to see what works best for you. Needless to say, the slower you go here, the more it's going to tax your computer. And the higher you go here, the less it's going to tax your computer. And all of this is at the cost of visual clarity. So you're going to have to look for your sweet spot. As far as profile and tune go, they really aren't very relevant. I've never noticed much of a difference. You just notice a big difference in the quality as far as the CPU usage goes. So there you have it. That's how you set up your OBS to record. So now that your recording is set up for what you want, let's make sure your computer is keeping up. All right, so in order to troubleshoot, we're gonna go up here and we're going to go to view and we're going to go to stats. And this brings up this window right here. Now on the output, there's nothing we really need to worry about except for this recording piece right here, which gives us our total data output and our bit rate. And it's also gonna tell us about our drop frames. But we also wanna be looking up here at our frames per second and our CPU usage. Those are the most important pieces. So you wanna go ahead and click start recording. And of course, I can't actually do that because I'm recording on another machine in OBS and it would just be a big mess. But we already set up our settings in OBS and we're gonna click recording so that it's physically recording and we can get some good data and stats so we know what our computer's doing. Let me open my stats window on the one I'm actually recording on so that you can see what it looks like. So you can see that I'm recording and here is my total output. We dropped nine frames. We skipped a couple due to encoding lag. Um, my CPU usage is a 2.1. This is good. This is why I'm able to record high quality here. But if you are noticing that you are having problems here, well, that means we have to go on to the next step. Now you don't just wanna record screens like this. You wanna make sure that you record screens like whatever you're going to be doing. So if you're going to be playing games or you're gonna be showing videos, well, make sure that you have scenes set up to show you what that looks like as well. Let's get my stats window up here again. So now we can see I'm not dropping any more frames. My CPU usage is still the same. All the recording stuff appears to be going properly. You can see that we are recording at that 60,000 bit rate. So we should be getting extremely high quality recordings, but yours may not look like that. These might be very red. Your CPU usage could be very high. And if that's the case, that means we have some work to do. So your machine is struggling. What can you do to fix it? So now that you did some testing and troubleshooting and you realize that maybe your machine is struggling a little bit, well, there are some things that you can do that can hopefully keep that quality close enough, but also not overtax your machine. So if we go into settings, the first thing that we can do is go to output and recording, and we could drop this bit rate down from 60,000 to 50,000. Now that will obviously change the quality of the image a little bit, but you may not actually be able to notice it all that much, and it may take just enough stress off the machine for it to be able to record smoothly. So what I would do first is I would go ahead and drop that bit rate from 60,000 to 50,000, go ahead and do some test recordings and see what your stats look like. See if your CPU usage is still way up. See if you're dropping frames or lagging. If you drop this to 50,000 and it still looks good for you and you're not dropping those frames, boom, you've solved the problem. If you are still dropping the frames and having high CPU usage, the next thing you can do is go ahead and mess around with your preset. So maybe you can't do quality, maybe you have to drop it to performance or max performance. Now, obviously this is going to affect the visual quality of your stream. If you are using X2, Six, four, maybe you have to go ahead and bump up your CPU usage preset to super fast or ultra fast. Or if you're using medium, you just have to kind of slowly climb this up, then test, see what your CPU and your drop frames are at, and see if the visual quality is acceptable for you. Now, if none of this stuff works, or you find the sweet spot where your machine works great, but the visual quality is just not good, well, the only other thing that you can really do is go ahead into your video and drop your canvas resolution and your scaled resolution down. Then resize your assets. And by resize your assets, I don't mean just scale them using the little corner box. I mean, if I'm using footage like this right here, this is in 1080. I'm gonna wanna run this through a program to rescale it to 720 so that I can still get the highest quality look 
into it and it's going to be the least taxing on my computer. Now for a camera or something like that, a lot of times you can just rescale the camera, but you can also set the resolution of the camera so that it's native inside of OBS and that is your best solution. You want your assets to be the same size as your canvas and the same size as your recording. And creating a very, very high quality 720 recording and then upscaling it is probably going to look better than a poor quality 1080 recording. So that's always an option that you can try out if you run into a situation situation where you just can't record with OBS at a high enough quality of bit through rate or quality setting. Other than that, the other option that you have obviously is to go out and if you're using X264, pick up an older NVIDIA graphics card. The card I'm using now is a 970. It's more than five years old. You can pick some of these up on the used market and they have the built-in NVIC encoder. You just slap it in your machine and bada bing, you're not gonna have all that much of a problem recording pretty high quality stuff. So it's always an option. And of course the other option is just to upgrade your computer overall. But I definitely recommend that if you're going to use this for live streaming anyway, ways try to get something with an nvidia card in it that has that encoder it just makes sense if you're gonna be upgrading and paying for it anyways so there's some solutions for you without spending any money and if you're going to upgrade anyways you're probably going to want to look for something with an nvidia card in it so you can use that nvidia encoder that is what's truly optimized for obs and recording and streaming. If you want to see how to troubleshoot live streaming issues you may be having with OBS, check this video out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.